Welcome back, my young thinkologists. Today's quick chemistry fact is about the atomic model of the atom, specifically the modern atomic model of the atom. Modern atomic model. And the individual who played a major role in the modern atomic model of the atom is Niels Bohr. Very famous quantum physicist. Um, he basically said this. Uh, he looked at Rutherford's atomic model, which, as we all know, uh, kind of looked like this right here, which was a solar system like uh, model. And he said, okay, if this is going to work, atoms have to have defined orbital shells. Uh, the electrons have to be um, in these defined orbital shells uh, in order for this to work. Um, he also said that these orbital shells themselves actually have defined shapes. Um, and the math involved to find this, everybody, if you've ever heard of quantum mechanics, yeah, it's very tough math uh, that's involved in actually determination of a lot of this stuff. Now, more importantly, these shells and these shapes are quantized. Quantized. Now, all that means is uh, to be quantized is to limit something to a set number of possible values. So, the set number of values um, is actually the shells. And uh, you'll find out that you could go to um, an infinite amount of shells on an atom, and that electron in that outermost shell won't even play a part in. Um, actually being on the nucleus or near the nucleus of that atom um, so we actually have to quantize the actual physical amount of shells for this to work for even the largest atoms on the periodic table and let's show this uh, if we look at helium let's look at helium that's a that's a good one to start with helium has two protons Helium also has two electrons. And lastly, helium has, let me pick a nice color here. Well, let's pick yellow. Helium has two neutrons. Okay, that's a fact. You can get all this information out of the periodic table just by looking at uh, the atomic number of helium and the mass number of helium. Um, so I'm just going to kind of draw in little circles here. Uh, so there's one proton. Um, here's another proton, and let's put some electrons in here. Sorry, not electron. Yeah, oops. Let's go ahead and rechange that color. Let's put yellow for neutrons, right? Okay, so a neutron and a neutron, right? So two neutrons and two protons. Now, according to Bohr, uh, the electrons are in set positions. They're in set shells. Uh, the question is how many can I have in each of these shells here? The n equals one shell um, right here and the n equals two and n equals three um, and actually n equals four, n equals five, n equals six, etc, etc. And actually a thing to note, um, the further out you go, uh, the closer that these shells get. Um, that just has to do with um, you know keeping the outermost electrons intact with the the nucleus of the atom and holding stability um, across the board here. But relating back to uh, determining exactly how many electrons we have in our shells. Now, n equals one has only two electrons that it's able to hold. Um, that's just because it's so darn close to the nucleus. The nucleus will actually hold those suckers in real tight. They're not going anywhere, okay? And actually, these electrons are, in fact, moving um, in defined orbital shapes uh, around the nucleus of this atom, okay? Let's go to another example. Let's look at, oh, I don't know. Let's just look at the next one. Let's look at, uh, let's go lithium. Lithium, okay? That's on the, the number three on the periodic table of elements, atomic number three. And it has, everybody, three protons. If its atomic number is three, it has three protons. It also has 
three electrons. And if you do some math um, and subtract seven from three, you actually find out that it has uh, four protons. And I'll use yellow. Sorry, not protons, four neutrons. Okay, because it is atomic mass is seven. So four plus three is seven. Okay, let me draw some, some protons. So one, two, three. There's my protons. Let me put some neutrons in. So one, two, three, and four. Now if you're wondering, okay, how did I decide where to put these? I'm just putting them in random order here on, just to represent the nucleus, okay? So uh, this is four neutrons and three protons in lithium. Okay, everybody, where do you think these electrons are going to go on n equals one? Well, like I said, you can only hold two electrons in the lowest energy level, which is n equals one. So automatically, you're going to have just two electrons. Um, and then where do you suppose this next electron is going to go? That third one is going to go on n equals two, n equals three, uh, n equals four, n equals five, etc., etc. Well, it'll just start to fill the next orbital level. So we're just going to have an electron go into the next orbital level. And notice we only have one electron in the n equals two energy level. Guess what? Those electrons actually have a name. Um, we call those in chemistry valence electrons. Uh, they have their own name because they are important. Hey, do you all remember how we get an ion? What happens to lithium if this electron goes out? Ah, well, we're left with more positive charge right here. So we actually get, notice, no longer lithium, but you get lithium plus. And that's just due to this valence electron here um, jumping off the orbital shell, okay? So notice the information does go full circle. Let's do another example. Let's look at, oh, I don't know. Let's look at a noble gas. Um, noble gas. And I'll talk about why we call it a noble gas. It wasn't developed by a king or any, any royalty. Um, let's look at neon. Neon, if you look at the periodic table, has 10 protons. It also has 10 electrons. Oh, wrong color, sorry. 10 electrons. And 10 neutrons. Yes. I'm not going to draw these all in. Let's just go 10 neutrons um, and 10 protons, okay? So 10 neutrons, 10 protons in the nucleus of neon. And let's fill in our electrons, everybody. So one electron and n equals one, two electrons. Ah, where are these extra electrons going to go? We only have eight left here, All right? 10 minus two equals eight electrons left. Well, turns out every energy level after n equals one, you can fill with eight electrons. And that is actually very significant. Um, it actually plays its part in naming neon as a noble gas. Um, eight electrons, it turns out, is very, very suited by every single element on the periodic table. Uh, sorry, eight electrons in the outermost shell is very suited for just about every element on the periodic table. Um, and that's just because eight electrons, everybody, fills its octet. Um, an octet is uh, when all valence electrons, all eight, I'm going to substitute VAL for valence, valence electrons, fill the outermost shells on an atom, <coughs> and causes it to be what we call in chemistry an inert gas. In this case, neon's a gas. So it is inert, meaning it cannot react with anything readily. And actually, in fume hoods of most uh, sophisticated chemical processes, they actually use um, not neon, but they actually just use argon gas because it's so darn inert. It's so noble. Um, the electrons really resist change to anything present in that uh, fume hood. Okay, so the thing to take note here is 
Uh, the electrons are in defined orbitals, so notice at n equals 1 we have two electrons and only two electrons. At n equals 2 we actually have eight electrons. Um, and the number goes up. The more electrons you have, you just keep filling them up until you can't fill any more, okay? So that is it. Um, I look forward to seeing all of you tomorrow in class. Uh, enjoy the rest of your e evening, my young thinkologists. Have a great day.